Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Physics Engine tutorial series. Last time, we made our colliders fully generic, so we can use whatever collider we feel like, as long as we actually implement it in the physics engine. But, we still have an issue with collision response, and let me show you what I mean. I've got two spheres moving towards each other, and you expect they bounce off, but... Well, that's not exactly what happens. We're just inverting the velocity. And it does something, but it's not exactly bouncing. So, today, we're going to try and fix that. And the big thing we're going to need to do this is we're going to need to change our intersect data. So rather than just storing whether we're intersecting and the distance, we're actually going to get rid of that. And we're going to have a const vector 3f, actually today, Oh, and we'll need to actually include dot dot slash core slash math 3d dot h for this. But we're going to have a const vector 3f, and this is going to be I'm what I'm going to call, for lack of a better name, just m direction. Although it's going to be a little bit more than this. This is not only going to store the direction of the collision, but it's also going to the length of this vector is going to be the distance that we used to have. So, when I say get distance, I can just say return mdirection.length if I really wanted to. And that will. And that should give us the same result. But of course, this means we're going to need to change a few things. Like, for instance, we're not taking in a const float for distance anymore. We're taking in a const vector 3f direction. And that means we're going to need to, of course, change the constructor, do all of the monkey work, basically, that you should know how to do. And there. So with that, this does mean we're going to need to change our colliders a bit. And I'll show you what we really need to do. So, first off, in bounding sphere, since this is the collider we're using, our distance is correct, but we're not just interested in the distance anymore. Like I said, we're interested in the direction. So, for bounding sphere, all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the way center distance is calculated. I'm going to have a vector 3f called direction. And that's going to be equal to this vector math we're using to, well, get a vector. And this should be the vector pointing in the direction of the other sphere. And once we get center distance from, by taking the length of this, I'm actually going to say direction divided equals center distance. So in effect, we're manually normalizing the direction. And with that, now that we have, well, got the direction normalized, all we have to do is multiply it by the actual distance between the spheres, and we have a proper vector. So I'm going to take distance right here. I'm just going to say direction times distance. And there we go. That fixes bounding sphere. Now AABBs these are going to be, get a little bit interesting. Are you ready for this, viewers? All we have to do, take distances, return that instead of max distance. Done. <laughs> it's that simple. We already had it. Planes, they're also going to be really hard. You ready for this, viewers? All we're going to do is we're going to take m normal times distance from sphere. And that is it. That is all we have to do. It's really that simple. So with that, that should have updated all our colliders, and I should be able to build, and probably get a few errors be from our unit tests, because, well, I've changed a few things. Yeah. Thought so. So, one moment while I just go ahead and correct that. Okay, I went ahead and fixed the issue. The big thing I needed to change was all these checks need to be against positive values now. All the distance assertions must be against positive values. And here's why. In intersect data, our distance function is returning direction.length. And even if parts of direction are negative, this is going to return a positive value no matter what. So the correct negative values are still in direction, it's just we can't get that from get distance. So that's why. Also, I created a getter for get distance off screen because I figure you know how to make getters by now. Oh, and for aabb.cpp, we're going to need to do a little bit more work with this, 
so I just commented out all the distance assertions for the time being. Now, what we can do now that we have this direction vector is in the physics engine we can implement a more appropriate intersection check. And also at this point I build and run just to make sure everything's working for you. And, okay, but yeah. Anyways, now that we've done all that, we can do a proper balance here. So I'm going to have a vector 3f that I'm going to call direction. And that equals intersect data dot, guess what, get direction. And I'm actually going to normalize it. I don't care about the distance in this case. I just care about the direction for now. And rather than setting my velocity to my objects dot get velocity times negative one, rather than just inverting it, I'm actually going to reflect. I'm going to say it reflects based on the collision direction. And now because of the way this works, I'm actually going to have to cast it to a vector 3f like this. But other than that, it should work just fine. So the velocity is reflecting based on the direction. Pretty simple. And I'll do the same thing for objects of j. And this will almost work. See if you can spot what's wrong with this. So I'm going to build and run. You see them move towards each other. And this one bounced properly, but, well, this one bounced sort of in the opposite direction you expected. And that's because of the way we're constructing the intersect data. We're doing objects of i intersect objects of j. So this direction is pointing correct for any operation on objects of i, point towards objects of j, but for objects of j, it's sort of pointing in the wrong direction. So we're actually going to have to say direction times negative 1 here. We're going to have to invert it. So that way it's pointing back towards objects of i, if that makes any sense. So now if I build and run, I think I actually forgot to save, so this might not work. Yeah, I've <laughs> I forgot to save the file, so let's try that again. And now if I run... Oh, it's still not working. What's up with that? Okay, and I've realized that I was being a little bit of a nincompoop. No, you cannot invert a reflection just by inverting the normal. Well, what I've done here is I've taken the direction and reflected it against object i's velocity. And object i's velocity was normalized when I did this. And then I'm reflecting object of i with that other direction that I generate from that. And what this is essentially doing is it is flipping the normal around the direction the object is going and then reflecting the object based on that. And technically, I believe this works, but I'm also pretty sure there was a, there's a trick to this that make, that's a lot simpler to invert the direction. So if you know of that, let me know, because for some reason I can't think of it right now. And I oh, save and then build and run. And now you see the two objects flying towards each other, and they bounce off each other like you'd expect. So yeah, and with that, folks, we have taken our first step into properly handling collision response. Now granted, bouncing off is only one type of collision response you might want, but it's definitely a start. So, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you in the next video, where we'll start working on, again, just making things a little bit more general. Thank you. See you then.